Hi guys, it's John here, and this is a benchmark comparison test between the Exos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now this is on the S22 Ultra, and they have both finally had the Android 13 update with the One UI 5.0. So this is a just a sort of full benchmark test to see how they both compare since the previous update. So sadly, the Snapdragon was sat on the September update up until about two days ago, so I wasn't able to do a update for November. The Exynos got its One UI update, I think it's about two weeks ago, so yeah, I've been waiting patiently for the Snapdragon to get its update too. But anyway, we're going to run through the usual benchmarks as we always do, starting with the Geekbench CPU test. We'll then move on to the Geekbench Compute Test and 2.2 Benchmark, followed by the 2 3D Mark Test. Don't forget, as always, to keep an eye on the battery percentage. They both started at 100% and they both have a SIM card inserted. Okay, so here we are with the Geekbench CPU results, and you can see there's not really a huge difference compared to the September update running on Android 12, and it's a bit sad to see, I guess, in that sense, but uh, yeah, there's basically neither here nor there a decrease on both on the single core, a slight increase on the Exynos multi-core, along with the similar decrease in the Snapdragon's multi-core. Temperature-wise, both around the same, 32, uh, between 30 and 34 in the final tests, so nothing really too exciting there for the Geekbench CPU results. Let's move on to the compute test and see how they both compare. So the compute scores are slightly interesting. The Snapdragon hasn't really changed a whole lot at all. You can see just a minus 0.15%, so neither here nor there with the Snapdragon. But the Exynos has had a 3.5% increase on its Geekbench compute. And I have run this test multiple times, and it does seem to be staying around this 8,500 mark on average. So it's doing pretty well with its compute scores. But yeah, nothing really majorly improved over Android 12, sadly. Let's move on to the Antutu benchmark now and we'll see if there's any differences in there. Okay, so again, not a very interesting result here when we're comparing to, to the last test I did in September. Now you'll notice on the Antutu test that the Snapdragon is saying it's running a different version, 9.44. I downloaded the exact same 9.5.0 update from the Antutu site. I even uninstalled and reinstalled, but for some reason it still shows up as 9.44 on the Snapdragon. 
It's a bit odd, but uh, they are both running the latest version, which is 9.5.0. So here are the results, and you can see, again, nothing very interesting here. There hasn't been any major improvements in performance compared to Android 12. Again, just a meaningless sort of 1% here or there increase or decrease on both with the Snapdragon still comfortably winning. And you'll notice that the Exynos first test, which should be its best test, it was actually just about the same as the Snapdragon's last and final test, which should be its worst test. So Snapdragon's still comfortably winning in the Antutu field. Let's move on to the stress test now, and this will run three times for 15 minutes, and we'll compare the graphs side by side. Okay, so here we are, we have the September update down at the bottom, and it's quite interesting differences here in the stress test when we compare it to the November update. So something to just keep in mind is the CPU cores clock here. So we can see here, it does drip, dip to 2000 megahertz here, but on the previous update we did, we did have dips down to the 1500 mark. So that is straight away an instant improvement, at least for this month compared to the previous one. Performance wise though, we still see it sticking around the 80% mark. You can see it is definitely higher here in its first test than it was back in September. So you could argue that's an improved result there. And again, with the second test, performance is sticking around 70% for most of the test here. As you can see, whereas last time we tested, it was around 60%. So that is again, improvement in CPU performance. The last test we can see the performance is again, it's hovering around this 80% mark, it looks very similar to the first test here, but we do see the cores getting clocked down to below 1600 for core seven and six here. We can see here that the other cores are running at around 13 to 1400 megahertz. So not brilliant really, but it is a very similar picture to what we saw here in the September update. It's just that we started at about 1900 and then we went back down to 1600. So it's kind of, it's, it is better, but it's, uh, it's very similar to the September update. So let's have a look at the Snapdragon. And this is always a very messy one. And it's very hard to sort of pinpoint exactly what's happening. But I'd say overall that the performance is possibly a, a tiny bit worse on this November update. We see a lot more dipping down here to the 50% mark. Whereas before we didn't get anywhere near that in the first test at least. Cores themselves are just doing as they always do, flipping up and down constantly, but at least they're not dipping too low, except when you look at core six down here, which is sort of dipping down to the one gigahertz mark. The second test I'd say arguably is a lot better than the September update. We can see here, this was jumping up and down quite a bit, but here it does sort of stabilize at around sort of 70% mark here for a while, giving good performance. But we do see the cores clocking down a bit here as well. So they've gone down you can see here core seven going down well below the sort of 1500 megahertz mark. So yeah, it's doing some clocking here. We have got the Thermal Guardian enabled, don't forget, but it doesn't seem to have been helping in this case at least. And the third and final test, performance again seems to be a bit worse than it was in the September update. September we had lots of peaks up to nearly 100, which is nice to see, but here we're only peaking to 100 once whereas the other high peaks are just to 80, and that's only happening about three or four times where it actually just goes above 80. So I'd say a bit, a bit worse overall there for the Snapdragon, as well as we saw with the Exynos. So nothing really too exciting there with the Android 13 update. Let's move on now to the wildlife test and see how they do in the extreme test there. <laughs> 
Right, so the Snapdragon has easily won this test with the best loop and the lowest loop scores being the highest. It did get a bit hotter though, as we have seen in previous tests, so 42 versus 40, and the stability goes to the Exos, but that is obviously because it's running lower speeds and therefore is slightly more stable, but not a massive amount really, 67 versus 77, 10% difference in stability between the two. But yeah, the Snapdragon is easily outperforming the Exos 2200 on the wildlife test here. We'll move on to the Slingshot Extreme test as well and see how they both do there. Okay, so some rather interesting results here. The Exos has won the first graphics test here with a score of 65.7. And then we see the usual win graphics test part two as it has been previously for the Snapdragon. But it also then takes over on the physics test part one. So score of 70 versus 68 there for the Snapdragon. The physics test two and three both go back to the Exos though, as we have seen in previous tests. But overall, both have performed, you know, about the same as last month with the Exos 2200 performing a lot worse with a minus 4% compared to the minus 1.8% on the Snapdragon. So there we have it. Nothing too interesting there to report between either phone. They have both sort of stuck around the same performance wise. Now they have both been factory reset after the Android 13 update. So I tried to make this as fair as possible. And yeah, there's not really much to say, but it doesn't look like there's much more performance coming out or being squeezed out just yet, at least with the One UI 5 update. Now I have seen quite a few bugs on the Exynos as I do use that as my daily phone, but there was another update for the November patch, which does seem to have fixed that and made it a bit more stable. So time will tell whether they can get any more life out of these two phones before the S23 comes out. Hopefully they can, but it does always seem to be this thing where we sort of have to wait nearly 12 months for the phones to reach their optimal performance. It is worth pointing out again that the battery life on the Exynos is still much better than the Snapdragon. You see here that they ended on 43% on the Exynos versus 32 on the Snapdragon. So that's 11% more battery on the Exynos after all those tests. So battery wise, the Exynos is still the phone to go for. Performance wise as well, I mean, are you gonna notice these things day to day? Probably not unless you have them side by side like this. So I'm not trying to say to get one or the other, but either phone will be absolutely fine. Now I'm gonna be doing a gaming test now that these have both been upgraded. I think we've waited long enough for the Exynos 2200 to be supporting games. So it'll be a good comparison to test gaming performance in both of these phones. So don't forget to like and subscribe so that you'll be notified when that video comes out. If you have any comments at all, do leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.